Hi. Now I've got another example here that you might like to try. It's based on using De Marva's theorem. What we've got to do is express root 3 minus i all to the power 8 in the form a plus i b, where a and b are real numbers. So if you'd like to uh, give this a try, just pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is define z, a complex number z. Let's just say we say that let z okay, equal the complex number root 3 minus i. Now, what I want to do is to work out what the modulus and the argument is so I can represent z as a complex number in the mod arg form. And to do this, what I'm going to do is just sketch a argon diagram. You might not want to do this. You might be able to just do it straight in your head, but I'll put it here just for reference, OK? So we've got the real axis here, and we've got the imaginary axis. And if we're looking at our complex number z, root 3 minus i, it's going to be represented something like this, OK? So this is z, where we go, let's just mark this in, where we go root 3 units to the right on the real axis and one unit down. So if we just mark that in as being root 3 there and one unit down. So when it comes to working out the modulus of z, the length of this line, it's just done by Pythagoras' theorem. So we've got then that the modulus of z okay, equals the square root then of the root of 3 squared, root 3 squared plus 1 squared. In other words, we get 3 plus 1 is 4, root of 4 is 2. So there's the mod of z. As for the arg of z, the arg of z is going to be this angle in here, OK? And it'll be written as a negative angle. Remember, the arg of z must be an angle between minus pi and pi radians. So we've got to go in a clockwise direction here. Well, well first of all, we'll work out what this angle is. I'll call it theta. Now, theta would be equal to the inverse tan of the opposite side, which is 1 over the adjacent side, root 3. So we've got the inverse tan of 1 over root 3. And if you work that out on your calculator, remember you need to work in radians mode. It is, in fact, pi upon 6. In degrees, it would be 30 degrees. But uh, in radians, the exact value is pi upon 6 radians. So that means that, therefore, the arg of z would be equal to minus pi upon 6. OK, so got to remember that turning in this direction would be a negative turn, minus pi upon 6 radians. OK, so having done that, we can now express this in mod arg form. So what we have then is essentially that root 3 minus i, OK, to the power 8, can be expressed then in mod arg form to the power 8. So you've got root 3 minus i is going to be 2, OK, for the modulus, 2, and then that's going to be multiplied by the cosine of the arg, which is minus pi upon 6. And then plus i sine of minus pi upon 6. And then all of this, this remember is the mod arg form for root 3 minus i, but all of this now is raised to the power 8. OK, so we can expand this. We can 
rewrite this as 2 to the power 8 and then the cos of minus pi upon 6 plus i sine minus pi upon 6 all to the power 8. We'll do that here. So we've got 2 to the power 8 and then this is multiplied by the cosine of minus pi upon 6 plus i sine of minus pi upon 6 and all this is to the power 8. Now 2 to the power 8 is 256 so put that there but when it comes to expanding this to the power 8 what we can do is now use De Marva's theorem and as a reminder remember for De Marva's theorem that is if you've got z equals r cos theta plus i sine theta then z to the power n is equal to r to the power n cos n theta plus i sine n theta. So what we can do is we can take our power and multiply it now by the arg, okay, for the complex number here. So what we have then is that if we multiply the angle minus pi upon 6 by 8, we're going to get minus 8 sixths pi, okay? And the same with the sine here, i sine of minus 8 pi over 6. Okay, so that's applying De Marva's theorem. Let's just put an arrow to that, okay, to signify that. Now, what we've got next is that this is equal to 256. But when we're working out the cosine of minus 8 sixths pi, which really reduces down to 4 thirds, we'll just cancel that out there, 4 thirds and 4 thirds there. Okay, so it's a minus 4 thirds pi. When we're doing this, you could enter that, I suppose, straight into your calculator, or being a fairly standard result, you might want to just think of the quadrants, okay, we'll just do it here, where this is zero radians, and a turn of minus eight six pi, or minus four thirds pi, is going to take you, in a clockwise sense, to this quadrant round here. This would represent a turn of minus eight six pi, or minus four thirds pi. So it's exactly the same as working out a turn in this direction, which would be two thirds pi, okay? So you could argue whether you want to keep it like that or whether you want to change it, it's up to you. You could rewrite this as the cosine then of two thirds pi, okay? Plus I sine of two-thirds pi, right? And then if you work out these values, the cosine of two-thirds pi is minus a half. So you've got minus a half. And then for the sine of two-thirds pi, that is root three over two. So you multiply it by the i and you've got plus i root three over two. And if we multiply each of these two terms by the 256, what you get is minus 128 and then plus 128 root 3 i. Okay, so we've got it expressed in that format. So I hope that's given you some idea then on how we can go about doing a question like this. Just take your complex number Okay, put it in mod arg form, as we did here. Use De Marva's theorem, and then from there, you should be able to simplify it. Okay?